Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. In the last few lectures, we have been discussing about a very important type of organometallic compounds. These are transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. They are usually designated by R, where this transition metal R or alkyl bond is a sigma type bond. So, that is designated by sigma. So, these are called transition metal Now, these complexes has tremendous utility in various industrial processes and hence from that perspective we were looking at applications of these transition metal sigma alkyl complexes and what we found that these transition metal sigma alkyl complexes can show CH activation reactions or can catalyze or participate in CH activation reactions. CH activation is a very uh, challenging problem in the sense that the CH bond is very is strong. So, to cleave a strong bond becomes a challenge and all the more is the selectivity. So, high bond strength and uh, achieving selectivity are two critical uh, points uh, that one needs to fight over in order to achieve CH activation. So, CH activation is a very challenging uh, problem and that can be solved using this sigma transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. Now, in the last uh, few lectures, we have looked in details about how CH activation uh, reaction proceeds, about how CH activation reaction can be used for utilization purpose. For example, making uh, functionalization of uh, CH and replacing the hydrogen with other functional group. And what we had seen is that this CH activation can be intermolecular as well as intramolecular. Now, intramolecular as well as intermolecular. The intramolecular CH activation starts with an agostic interaction So, this is called C H M agostic interaction and then it proceeds to give CH activation So, this is CH activation and uh, results and results is now transition metal sigma alkyl complex where activation of the 
CH bond at this center and this center has occurred. And finally, this can lead to CH functionalization. Similarly, if one were to look at intramolecular CH activation, instead of an agostic interaction which had been observed in case of intramolecular CH activation, in case of intra intermolecular uh, alkane complex is formed. This is a transition metal sigma alkane complex. This transition metal sigma alkane complex undergoes similar kind of CH activation to give the transition metal sigma alkyl complex so what we see that both for intramolecular and intermolecular there is a parallel parallel pathway for CH activation. The one proceeding with agostic interaction via uh, uh, the, uh, the activation CH activation forming sigma alkyl complex, the other starting from a transition metal alkane complex again likewise proceeding by CH activation to give a transition metal sigma alkyl complex. Now after this transition metal sigma alkyl complex has been formed one can do for any of these CH functionalization CH functionalization and that would result in formation of Fg, where Fg is the functional group kind of complexes. So, what we see that these hydrogen for Inter, intramolecular as well as this hydrogen for intermolecular can be replaced in this end by a, a sequence of reactions for example intramolecular intermolecular sigma uh, CH activation followed by CH functionalization leading to a very important type of compound uh, where you have a functional group in the alkane moiety. Now this is exactly what we have been uh, studying in the last uh, uh, few uh, lectures and a uh, uh, big picture of which is uh, shown here. This big picture also tells us that this process of CH activation which is extremely difficult can be achieved catalytically as well as uh, stoichiometrically using this all important uh, transition metal sigma alkyl complexes in carrying out these protocols and uh, hence uh, uh, these uh, compounds are of interest from the perspective of chemical catalysis. Now with this uh, uh, brief overview of what we have studied in the last uh, few lectures about how you have developed this concept of transition metal sigma alkyl uh, uh, complexes, we are going to today focus on something more interesting particularly looking at bonding uh, interaction in this kind of transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. Now 
Oh, by and large, what we had seen that for these CH activation uh, to occur or for that matter uh, the initiating species which is an ag agostic interaction or a, a transition metal sigma alkyl complex uh, formation, even to initiate these or to go along this, there are three criteria which are required. Uh, the, these criteria are that the transition metal center has to be electronically unsaturated. Uh, the transition metal center has to be coordinatively unsaturated and third the transition metal should be electron rich. So, these three criteria are important for a transition metal sigma alkyl complex to undergo uh, uh, the CH activation leading to CH functionalization. Seminal work in this area particularly activation followed by functionalization has been done by C. Love as well as uh, uh, the example of Hartwig that we have discussed among many others uh, uh, that is not in the preview uh, of this uh, course, purview of this course. Now, uh, let us take a look at how the bonding interaction happen in transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. So, the transition metal sigma alkyl complexes can be denoted as something like and for the sigma alkane complex this is a transition metal sigma alkane complex. The related interaction is, is in dihydrogen complex which is also given by and for example in transition metal silane complex. Now, even though the interaction there is a commonality, the commonality being that transition metal is interacting with sigma bonding orbitals or with a sigma bond uh, uh, in each of these and there is also a commonality in the type of interactions that is required for holding this alkane dihydrogen as well as the other silane molecule sigma bonded molecule towards the transition metal and all of these can be explained by frontier uh, uh, orbital energy diagram. Molecular orbital diagrams. To understand the kind of interaction prevalent in these complexes, let us now take a look at how the interaction uh, proceeds. For example, for a generic interaction of this sigma type, where X can be hydrogen, carbon, silicon among other things. Now, this interaction can be represented by two types. For example, the sigma bond of this HX moiety which is full sigma orbital is occupied due 
donates its electron to a metal empty d type orbital this is empty metal orbital and this type of interaction is called L2 metal sigma donation can be expanded as ligand to metal sigma donation and the other type of interaction that may happen is the metal having a field d type orbital donating to the sigma star of this H x sigma star empty orbital and the metal full orbital donat donating on the back to sigma star orbital and this is called metal or m to l pi back donation or metal to ligand acceptor interaction. This interaction is non-classical in nature as involves 3 center 2 electron. So, non-classical interaction 2 E 3 C type of bonding. Now, these two are in synergy to each other. one reinforces the other and what we see that this sigma bonding to L m is reinforced by two kind of interaction. In the first the sigma electrons or electrons in the sigma bond donates to an empty metal orbital followed by metal orbital which is already full donates back to the sigma star orbital and more significant is this back donation the more weakening of the metal to uh, the H x bond is bond formed. So, another important attribute is stronger 
M to L pack donation weakens H X bond and the extent of forward donation and back donation that occur is dependent on the substituents at the ligand at the metal as well as the type of bond that HX is forming. So, these sort of gives a unified picture of how alkane transition metal complexes are formed, what kind of interaction they exist as well as the same is true for alkane a dihydrogen transition metal complex or silane transition metal complexes uh, uh, how uh, the kind of uh, orbital interaction occur between the bond uh, of the alkane, silane and dihydrogen with that of the empty as well as filled orbitals of the transition metal. So, unified explanation of this sigma donor and pi acceptor synergism results in in stabilization of sigma complex. So, ln m z plus plus h x gives ln m z plus h x which is the sigma complex and which undergoes oxidative addition to give the requisite sigma alkyl complex or the H x complex. So, this gives the pathway in which C H activation occurs and also tells us about the mole frontier molecular orbital interaction that leads to C H activation. Now, we will follow this course of C H activation in bit more detail. For example, we will follow this as a particular reaction trajectory and look at how the energy surface looks like for similar CH activation proceeding via alkane complex and then leading to the transition metal alkyl complex. So, let us take a look at this reaction trajectory y axis designates free energy and x axis gives the reaction coordinate and we will follow this for a complex which is already CH activated. So, let us say we have a transition metal as two plus oxygen state having a methyl and a hydrogen alkyl. So, it is a transition metal sigma alkyl hydride complex which will undergo reductive elimination to give a transition metal alkane complex which would be something like
and let us say the energy profile for the same would be something like that. Now, this transition metal alkane complex can be formed with other metal carbon hydrogens as well. So, there will be eta H 1 in equilibrium with eta H 2 and which will be in equilibrium with eta H 3 in further equilibrium with eta H 4. All of these will be in equal energy and hence they would be all mutually exchanging with each other. As a result we will get and there will be 4 such complexes 1, 2, 3, 4 which will be mutually exchanging with each other resulting in 4 valleys for this transition metal sigma complex. And finally, these would undergo oxidative addition to give back the reactive give back the metal alkyl complex and if it the reaction so if by deductive elimination it has formed the metal alkane complex this metal alkyl complex can go oxidative addition and give the metal alkyl complex there is another possibility of alkane complex just leaving the metal and eliminating alkane and uh, metal uh, Z plus. So, if this eliminates alkane the product will be M Z plus plus C H 4 and that would be designated by this activation barrier. So, what we have over here is that if one goes from metal alkyl hydride to transition metal sigma alkane to transition metal ion plus alkane, this represents reductive elimination pathway. On the other hand, if one goes from metal cation and alkane forming metal sigma alkyl complex which undergo oxidative addition to give metal alkyl hydride complex. So, then going this right hand side to the left hand side represents oxidative addition reaction. And when the oxidative addition products are formed which is this, this is metal al sigma alkyl com com complex and both metal alkane, metal ion cation alkane as well as metal sigma alkyl complex they go via sigma complex and sigma complex can have several rearrangement between several of its uh, forms, they are of equal energy and degenerate in level. So, that is why it says that why sigma alpha and complex is so crucial because it is it part of both oxidative addition and reductive elimination. Now, let me summarize what we have uh, discussed in details about uh, this transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. We have looked at the molecular uh, orbital frontal energy interaction that between the transition metal and the 
sigma bond of the sigma alkane uh, ty type uh, compounds. We have also seen in the big picture about how CH activation proceeds by intramolecular as well as uh, intramolecular uh, uh, pathways. And lastly, what we have seen is that if we go from the reductive elimination side or from the oxidative addition side, how both of these would converge in the uh, transition metal sigma complex and it can bifurcate in either direction. And we have looked at the free energy diagram explaining uh, the big picture of these individual small processes. With that, uh, we have come to an end of discussion on various kind of CH activation processes and we look forward to another interesting topic in the next lecture that uh, uh, would discuss about CC activation uh, reactions. With that, I say a goodbye for today and I look forward to being with you in the next lecture. Thank you.